So we represent actually uh, Dubai Properties Group, which is uh, the ultimate owner you know, of, of JBR. And JBR is the venue uh, whereby we're hosting Dubai Campus. And this specific event is actually aligned with the His Highness vision, the ruler of Dubai, in making Dubai an outdoor open gallery, whereby you know, people can showcase their arts, whereby people can enjoy you know, all arts uh, and experience uh, all of the culture you know, experiences through arts and through galleries. Dubai is a very interesting place for an artist or a visionary or an architect because it's very much like the world's greatest, largest canvas, which has been partially painted in. And much of it is this grand, expansive desert which has these little lines, like a sketch, waiting to be filled in with color, with life, with living things. It's really the city of the future, a city being built, a city waiting to become. The event we're about to see is called Dubai Canvas. We have over 30 artists, over 60 works, and nearly two kilometers of art happening at the JBR Jumeirah Beach Resort in Dubai. The vision of the city of Dubai is an international or even global vision. And likewise, the Dubai Canvas Festival has artists from over 14 countries. Let's go now and see what the different artists have to say about this new society of Dubai and what they think they can offer to it. Good morning, I'm here with Adri de Rossio, and uh, she is a very special artist. She has probably won more awards and participated in more festivals <laughs> than even myself or anybody else I've heard of. Since I started to do street painting, I became uh, fascinated and I decided why not in my city because in my city we didn't have. So I started to organize one festival and then another one and then now we have three festivals per year in my city. Well, it's a very special place because here the people, I, I can see that they are proud of themselves, mm -hmm. of their nationality. And also, it's like uh, we have a dream, let's do it. Hi, I'm here with Carlos Alberto Garcia Hernanes. Yeah. He's working together with Adri, as he has probably for many, many years. Uh, she introduced street art to me in uh, six years ago, so we started to work together since that time. Could you tell us something about uh, the JBR here? Well, this is amazing because it's completely different to anything I've seen before. The whole country and this area is, is very uh, particular because you see a lot of uh, multicultural uh, interaction with the people and also this kind of luxury and that, it's, it's absolutely amazing. Here we are at JBR, this is a very unusual environment for people who have spent their lives in Europe, I, I think I, I feel that way. Yeah. Um, what are your impressions about working here as compared to working in other places? Well, of, of course, the, the, the setting is amazing with all these uh, t tall buildings and, uh, well, what, what can I say, the, the weather is perfect and, uh, and also we, we are treated very, uh, very good as artists, everything is provided, so that's, uh, it's a great experience here. I'm here with Rudy Kistler here, who's a, a pavement artist, somebody who's traveled really pretty much the whole globe by now. Uh, what are your impressions here of JBR? Oh, it's just amazing. The people here are so friendly. So what we're looking at literally here is a bookworm. That's right, yes. These are my bookworms. And, and, um, play on words. and there's a great spot to pose where you're actually standing on the worm, and oh. that's the moment when the worm realizes it, and he looks up with his magnifying glass and says, hey, who's, who's gotten in oh. on my meal here? Alex here is a trained artist. Uh, we would consider a trained artist, of course, many people make a distinction be between someone who trained themselves and someone who went to school, but you not only have a degree uh, in fine arts, but also studied uh, oil painting restoration, didn't you? Uh, yeah, I did. Uh, I uh, uh, studied uh, restoration in the academy in Kiev. Uh, I really uh, like to, to make some architecture uh, on the paper, and I know how perfect it works. And what are you doing here? Uh, I'm making darts, uh, so um, it's a little bit uh, difficult to understand people now how to pose. So uh, after taking picture, you have to turn around, like rotate your picture. It looks like a dartboard uh, hanging on the wall. 
So this year is a little bit special for Julie because last year she was here, worked with some people, also with some of the local people uh, in creating some works. But this year she has workshops going and I think she's looking forward to it. Could you tell us about your workshops? Yeah, I'm actually, I mean, I have some smaller pieces I'm doing on my own, but the majority of my work here is doing a large community piece. It's involving uh, about like 15 or so local artists. It's been really exciting for me. It's, it's, um, it's a new experience for them. So I know that like one of the key moments was when they were drawing and drawing and they're just looking at all these unintelligible lines and they're just doing what I'm asking them to do. And then when we got most of it blocked in, they went to the end and they saw it and they were like, oh my gosh, it actually looks like it's 3D. So that was really fun for them. Uh, Leon, I think you've been one of the most successful artists in terms of the kind of imagery that you select and I think you've had uh, some of the most individual successes in terms of viral images, images which have just knocked down the entire globe. What are you doing here? I'm doing a, a, here a mural, a painting right now and you can see uh, also uh, uh, dolls involved. So a little bit uh, back to the childhood again. Uh, for me it's always very important to um, to look back at your childhood, uh, so not forget, uh, um, not to forget your inner childhood, because it's uh, uh, therefore it always has to be a playful image uh, that people can recognize, and then they can be uh, drawn back to their childhood. He's one of the artists that I first really saw on the internet. It started uh, about eight years ago uh, when uh, one time I was just uh, really wondered uh, uh, by. Mm, artworks of uh, foreign artists uh, like Kurt Werner, Julian Bieber, uh, Teresa Listam. <laughs> um, I feel really comfortable uh, here and I'm really happy uh, to be a part of this festival. So I'm here with Tomotero Saitu, which everybody calls Tomo. I uh, actually uh, started uh, street painting in uh, Florence, Italy, like uh, 20 years ago, and uh, I've been uh, working, I've been trying to do street painting all over the world, many cities. When I travel, I just go with the chalk and uh, do street painting. Yeah, yeah. You're doing a great job here. You want to talk about your work oh, here? What you're yeah, trying to do? yeah. Uh, I'm trying to do the uh, sky and the uh, helicopter, and uh, you looking up the uh, sky and some buildings. So I'm here with Erica and Sean Ashby uh, from New Zealand. Uh, we've actually been doing it for over 20 years. Wow. And bizarrely enough, it feels as fresh now as it did back then. Oh, absolutely. We're finding new ways of working with a medium. This is the first time that we've worked with lots of colour. Most of the time we use a couple of tones of blue. So, you know, in the last few years we're really exploring different kinds of media. You can use your imaginations to take you to places that so vividly it's as if you're actually travelling there. But if you have the right outfit or the right hat, then it's a lot easier for that to be a real transition. Uh, so, Remco, what are your impressions about being here yeah, it's for me the first time and it's really great. It's uh, amazing, all, uh, all the big paintings and all the nice artists and all the beautiful work and also the murals, also things that I never saw before. So it's very inspiring and uh, yeah, very nice to be here. And would you say the weather is better here or in uh, Holland right now? I think the weather is a little bit better here. <laughs> it's like uh, summer for me. Uh -huh. Okay, I'm here with Andres Vera. Uh, how would you describe being here compared to being in Monterrey? Well, it's amazing because we are here sharing our art with uh, all the world because you see people from everywhere, from Europe, Asia, Middle East, and also Australia. So it's a, a great uh, opportunity to, to share our, our art and to interchange with other artists and with other people mm -hmm. with different uh, points of view and, and, you know, it's amazing. There's a constant flux and change happening. And um, also I think people here in this area are very um, familiar with and cultivated with certain types of culture, certainly art. They appreciate it, they come out, they support it. So uh, yeah, it's really nice. This area is terrific for that. Uh, we get really good at figuring out what each other's, you know, what we need. I, I get really good at figuring out what she needs and how to achieve it without getting in her way. I try to think of what she needs before she needs it so that make sure that she doesn't have to stress any, about anything. So. so here we are, a beautiful, pleasant evening at JBR in Dubai. Look at how we get to dress. I mean, light and the air is beautifully warm. And I'm here with Jenny McCracken, our 
Australian super champion. This is called an alicorn, apparently, because it has wings and uh -huh. a horn. I would have, I was just calling it a unicorn until I was informed reliably by a seven-year-old. Uh -huh. And the idea is that from the basis of, of your colouring in page, the imagination leaps into life. Oh, okay. I mean, what I love about these 3D illusions is that they are an invitation for adults to play in the street. And to be happy. Yeah. There's nothing else that uh -huh. makes adults play in front of strangers That's like true. a 3D artwork. Well, I'm here at this beautiful JBR Dubai evening with the painter, the graffiti artist and painter, mural painter Odith from Portugal. My favorite places still being like the abandoned places because I can't find a lot of corners on there. And you never know what, what kind of wall you can find. But this is, all those pieces are some kind of training. And this is like the, the responsible uh, job, you know, like you have to do something really cool, you know. Like. And this artist is a spray paint artist who is doing some three-dimensional works for the public here at JPR. Um, I would love to interview him, but I can't because like many of the street artists that start their work in the world of graffiti. He doesn't like to be interviewed or shown on camera. Uh, this is a long tradition starting I think with Banksy who made it rather famous, but there is a bit of a there is a bit of a logic to it, which is that if you're running around at night illegally spray painting people's buildings, even when you're invited to spray paint somebody's building, uh, you don't really want to be photographed because they might recognize your style and realize you're the same guy that went without an invitation and spray painted their building. Hello there, here we are at JBR again between two wonderful works in their own way. The work, of course, we've talked about before is that of Vito Mercurio, uh, an Italian artist, a friend of mine who, of course, couldn't be uh, a nicer guy to go up, the public can go up and talk to him and, and ask questions and he'll answer uh, in Italian, perhaps, but he'll do his best. Shock One, is, of course, is a tremendously popular on the internet and his works get millions of views. And um, he, of course, like, uh, like uh, Fana Kapan, does not want to be interviewed. So we get to just appreciate his message through his work. It's wonderful to me to see how here at JBR, two very, very different artists with very, very different styles get to be appreciated right across from each other. So there's a certain beauty and simplicity to just chalk on the pavement that sometimes gets lost when we get involved in complicated and difficult media. Um, here we can see that the actual movement of the hand is what attracts people's attention as I'm working. So a lot of what I look for in the work of other artists when I'm seeing them on the street is how do they move their hands, how do they move their bodies when they work? Is it interesting to the public, the actual act of painting? That's what, of course, uh, a pavement artist, somebody who works on the street, uh, used to go for because it was the kind of mesmerizing quality of the movement of the hand, of the movement of the body that made the art kind of a live art or a performance. Um, that can easily get lost. Uh, some of the painters here are brilliant and they move their bodies and they move their, um, they move their hands in such a way that people really kind of can follow it with their eyes and feel like they're participating in the process of creating art. And that, of course, is what we're aiming for as artists out here on the pavement, as opposed to working in our studios and just showing the works when they're already done.